Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Siren Air Television. We're going to take a look at the building over here at Starcar of a Ford Interceptor SUV. It's going to be turned into a patrol vehicle for one of our customers here in the Pacific Northwest. Has a variety of different equipment obtained from Sirenet in the vehicle and around the vehicle and on top of the vehicle as well. So we're going to go ahead and check it out with the boys here at Starcar as they put the vehicle together over the next several days. So hopefully you'll enjoy that video. Let's go inside right now and check out the building of a brand new Ford Interceptor SUV over here at Starcar with all the gear from Sirenet. So basically we have a Ford Interceptor SUV that's come into the shop and this vehicle will have a variety of equipment. This is some of the gear that the customer in question has put in the back that will need to be installed into it. And as you can see, it's a, a pretty straightforward vehicle built by Ford, purposely built as a police vehicle. So it has certain modifications which have been done to the chassis. But again, what will happen in this vehicle is we're going to be putting a a screen in it. We'll also be putting a special rear seat to allow the transportation of prisoners inside this. So the vehicle is going to radically change from an interior perspective that you currently see into a law enforcement vehicle that it will ultimately end up as. So definitely going to go ahead now and just basically assemble the bracketry here for the grill lights and the sound off ghosts we're putting in here. So this is something you've made by hand? Yeah. Yeah, just a simple little bracket, no holes drilled into the front bumper cover. It's just more or less pressure fitted. So Devin, basically you've put the wheel and 2E series into the front lower air dam of this SUV Ford Interceptor. And you mounted the bracket in the back here, I can see that there. Mm -hmm. So this is the actual bracket that you, you made for this? Yeah. Okay. And basically using the original factory supplied mounts more or less you're able to mount this in so basically you have to drill it out though right yeah yeah first thing i gotta do is drill out the plug and then i just made a bracket that uses what would be for the factory fog lights to mount to okay so again like the grill lights no holes are being drilled into the front bumper cover just using what is given all right let's go ahead and do it Power. Meanwhile, over here on the other side of the ranch. <laughs> Were you racing that this weekend? <laughs> Danny, you got yourself a real big truck. <laughs> this is Doug's farm tractor. Oh, here. the farm, yeah. You're, you're playing it off gonna, on the boss man, huh? Gonna be rototilling the garden here pretty soon once we get it running. Got a turbo on it. Basically, I just file it down. I left a little bit of a lip just because I didn't want to get too close and rough up the plastic. So then I just file it down so it's perfectly round. Alright, so now the clips are ready to go in. Now, these clips are something that you basically supply yourself or something you're going to get from Ford? Where do you get the clips from? Uh, yeah, we uh, just get them from a local hardware store, but you can get them pretty much anywhere. They're real common for automotive and 
other stuff. I actually have to mark these holes because I wasn't able to mark them until the hole was drilled. So basically the sound off intersectors you already put on, you've taken off the door panels, all the appropriate hardware to get access to the area in question. Yeah. And then you just basically drill underneath the yeah. mirror, exterior mirror, to yeah. mount those. And then run the cable through the mirror. Are they pretty straightforward to mount on? Are you having any issues with that or are they easy? Um, they're not too bad mounting them on the mirrors, running them through the door. That'd be fun. So Devin's gone ahead and mounted the last of the 2E series wheelings into the lower air dam as we can see here. So there's one on the left and there's one on the right. I'm going to be putting vertex in the back of lights on this car. Okay, on the Interceptor SUV. And then, so they're going to be blue, right? You put blue ones in here. Yeah. And then also up here in the tail area, you're going to mount some red blues up in this area here yeah they'll be in the corners one side and the other straight back into the uh, tail light area in the back of the vehicle and then just run the cable through. Yep. So Danny, basically you removed the door panel on this particular vehicle. Yeah, the factory door panel comes off and the, the wires and, and the cables that are behind here, right. they, they get tucked behind the door right. and then the flat panel goes on in place. And again, this is to make sure that the prisoner, which obviously will be in this area when they're kicking away happily as they're happy campers, uh, basically don't damage what was originally part of the vehicle that we see here. And at the same time, when this vehicle is decommissioned and taken out of service, they can possibly retail the vehicle in a condition that would be usable for taxi or the general public. Yeah. Okay. Now also you mounted a window barrier which is now very common here in the US, has been for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And this is a polycarbonate product. Now, both of these products, of course, come from Satina, which is a company up in Washington State in the US. And again, the nice thing about the polycarbonate with customers like is that you can, as you can see here, you can see through it. Now, the window barrier, i.e. the metal one, uh, works also, but in some customers, they just don't like the fact that they can see the barrier and that obstructs vision, so the polycarbonate definitely helps. So you basically put in the, oh, also here you put in the airbag cutoff switch, and again because you're going to have a MDT mounted inside here, right? Yeah. And just show me where you put that one in. Uh, so it, it hooks up on each side of the airbag over here. And just, I just spliced into it, and then the, the kit comes with these connectors. Just plug it in. Here's the switch. Which obviously once everything's put together will be nice and cleanly mounted up on the side of the console. Or yeah, on over the here box. somewhere. Okay. So we've gone ahead and put the uh, vertexes in the housing that's going to go up in the hatch above the 
rear tail door. Now, Danny, you sink these. You've already synced them. Yeah. So, Devin, you're now working up on the front fender area. Now, these parts you're installing is all that stuff from Satina. Yeah, these Satina's push bumper kit, the uh, PB5. So you're putting the front push bumper back on because basically you have to um, mark it. Yeah, the uh, the inner fender mounting brackets. There's a hole I got to mark on the bumper cover. It's probably gonna end up in this area, and uh, that'll allow me to attach the external brackets for the wraparounds. I need to get him a smartphone. Danny, you're going ahead now and pulling the cable through for the uh, vertexes. Yeah. And just run all the wires down and then through this boot here to right. inside. So Devin, what have we got going here? We've got the, basically the fender protector is already being put on. Yep. And uh, you've also got the push bumper on as well. Mm -hmm. Just right now working on bolting up the, the wraparounds on the side, making sure everything's level. Did it go on pretty straightforward? Uh, yeah. Um, only thing is, uh, you do have to mock up to drill these holes for the fender wraps. Um, that must be just to ensure that everything's level so they don't pre-drill those ones for you. Okay. Now this particular push bumper doesn't have lighting included in it, correct? Correct, yeah. But you're going to add some lighting onto it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, two sound off lights on each side. So we're going to go to the back of the vehicle now, right? And yeah. And show how we're going to set up. You've already run the wiring through? Yeah. Yeah, we have the uh, wire harness already ran. And uh, ran it back here, zip tied it to uh, the factory harness that's in there so it's all secure. And um, basically, um, we're going to mount all our stuff behind the rear partition. Okay, which and, is basically uh, this metal frame currently that we see here. That's going to be where the yeah. rear seat is going to be put in. Yeah, we're just kind of in a mock-up stage right now. So that's, you know, nothing's bolted down permanently. But um, uh, we need to run our power and our ground off of the provided uh, what Ford gives you with the police package. Okay. Now, again, the reasoning that Ford does this is so you don't have to go into the battery component area in the engine compartment. Correct, yeah, they give you uh, 80 supplied amps right off this, and uh, a couple more powers in the console as well. Okay. So it's very handy when setting up. So you're now setting up the CENCOM and the radio area to a degree in the back here? Yep, yeah, just kind of getting uh, a feel for where things are gonna go, what kind of space we have. Right. And again, Danny will then be putting the console in. He's already run cable up to the front there with the wiring harness which you guys build in house right yeah that's correct yeah we do do all the harnesses here and uh, light bar cables and antennas just drop down the C pillar so that's already in position ready to yep run. those are all mounted on top got the headliner back in great uh, we were putting in the partition in this board interceptor SUV yep I'm just prompting you with the name. <laughs> so it's back here. So is it fun, Devin, getting this one in? Oh yeah, they're always fun. Did it go in okay? Yeah. And basically, you've mounted half the screen in now, just putting in the, uh, the side panels. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. So it needs to go up, huh? Should I pull it up on there? Sure. I need to push my way. Your way. So basically, this is the back screen, which is part of the back seat support system. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, basically, this is the main support, and uh, it just bolts to the factory uh, bolts here on the floor, right here, and right here. And then our seat belts will mount to the two center. And it actually goes under the existing bracket that's in there from Ford. Right. And that's is part of their back su support. So this is the wire loom. So where have you pulled this from? So this is uh, coming from the center console area. And uh, we just run it down the side and uh, zip tie it, secure it to factory loom that's already ran by Ford. And then I kind of threw in all the panels, all the trim pieces, all the floor foam, floor covers, and then we found a good area to, to come through here. And then I just drilled my uh, two and a quarter, two and a half inch hole there, loomed the wires up and uh, brought them through. And this is this shelf area that you're kind of creating behind here is more or less where you're going to set up the radio, the wheel and Sencom system and so forth. Yeah, exactly. There's gonna be a filler piece that We'll go on the outside of this so that there's no access from the prisoner side of it. Right. And then another one from the back so that equipment won't damage what we put in for electronics. The Danny, that's the recess panel you just dropped in there. Yeah. And again, the concept behind the recess panel is to create space behind what is going to be ultimately the console area where this metal plate ends and that'll in turn allow you to mount your weapon system, shotgun, gun locks and so forth in that area as well. It's probably quite nice to have so much space to work in. It's one thing nice about this Ford and Zephyr SUV. There's really a lot of space from an installation point of view. Yeah. Yeah, you can be a lot more mobile and move around a lot easier. Then in the charger and the other small Oh, vehicle. yeah, definitely. The charger and the intercepts, interceptor sedans are pretty tight. And this is the lower kick plate down here. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is they can't get their hands underneath this because it's one solid, one solid piece. So we should probably put in those buckles and stuff. Here's fit. No. Oh, there we go. Tight fit. You got a, here's a socket. You can use your air gun. Yeah. 
Star Cars, this is Doug. Hey, how are you doing, Captain? Yeah, I can get your 15, 15 chargers, no problem. All in nice and tight? Yep, just tighten them all down. Perfect. Fit tall guys like you back here. Yeah. So this is going to be the side panel, the Lexan side panel for the uh, screen. Yeah. Plenty of uh, space to go back with the screen. Yep. So Devin, you've got the circuit board into the back of the vehicle, you can see that here. And you've mounted in the radio right now. Same time as in kind of in position as well. What, uh, what else is going on? Yeah, well that's basically it, you know, just uh, getting all our wires um, connected to the right spot so everything will uh, work as the customer requested um, basically um, this is like our position one two and three coming off the Sencom so I'll be hooking all the lights up to this strip right and uh, yeah radios and consoles and everything is fused through our ignition and our power tame power tamer so are you gonna put a partition or a barrier behind here where we can currently see the seat is that gonna happen at the back there yeah yeah we'll be making a cover that will come down and might have a slight bend right and uh so they can throw their equipment and uh whatever back here without going anywhere near that exactly yeah right so danny you got the console in it's already gone into position here i can clearly see that and you've also got the uh, gamber johnson components along with the uh, mdt or in this case they use a laptop in position as well so what else you got in uh, got the gun rack mounted and I'm gonna be wiring the gun rack and the flashlight and the radio speaker and run those wires into the console. Great. Was it straightforward to put the gun rack in? No issues? Yep. So you're basically gonna start loading up the SENCOM into the actual SENCOM controller? Yeah, we're going to have to um, transfer the program that we already have for this current customer into the Sapphire so that their uh, button layout and everything is consistent. So basically you've got the uh, side lights on now. You put those in a couple of minutes ago. Yep, the Enforce side lights. Which are mounted onto the Satina push bumper. Yep. And then also, what are you going to do now? you got to get the radios in, you got to mount those inside? Yeah, screw them down in the console. Okay, let's go check it out. You just click on output you want and then you designate all the parameters through simple clicking and unchecking. Now again, this is built around a customer specific requirements. Exactly, yeah. This is one that we've already pre-made and we're just going to transfer it over to the CENCOM. And uh, that's really easy. You got this transfer button here. It only takes a minute. And then it's complete. 
and then each one of these vehicles will be the same. Mm -hmm. No matter if it's a uh, patrol car, SUV, all the buttons on the SENCOM will have the same layout and function. You're setting up the fuses? Yeah, I just got done putting all the fuses in that we need, so we're going to fire it up and uh, see what we got. So Devin, uh, at the back of the vehicle now, you put in the compartment area, you secured it off as far as where the Sencom Sapphire and the radio goes. Let's take a quick take a look at that. All right. Another thing is we got the vertexes come on when the hatch opens. Okay. So this is now mounted in and it's basically held in position as we see it. So that will secure the components nicely in there. Yeah. Yeah, but it just acts as a, a divider or a guard so that when they're throwing their equipment in there, nothing gets banged up or damaged. And then Danny, you finished off the console and mounted everything into position. Yep. Well, there you have it. Danny and Devon are two intrepid high-speed test drivers taking a brand new Ford Interceptor SUV that has been built over here at Starcar out for a test drive. And like what ends with all good test drives is a quick car wash. And that's what they're about to do and get sorted out right now. So again, many, many thanks to all the gang over at Starcar, including Ted, Forgot Ted the last time, so Ted's the backroom engineering type guy that likes to stay off camera. Hi to Ted. To Doug, of course, the head honcho, the big man himself. And of course, to the two intrepid installers behind me there, Danny and Devon. And many thanks for them for putting up with us being here with Sonic Television and filming them at work. So again, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I'm sure there'll be lots more to come. Different vehicles are coming up. So again, a Ford Interceptor SUV built by Starcar. Lots of equipment from the gang over at Sirenet, including the Wheel and Liberty light bar, the Sapphire Sencon system, and a range of other components that you can figure out which is the right one for you. Check it out on the website. I'm Stuart, and as always, many thanks for watching Sirenet Television.